process of longing for love from the being who I believed was all of these things, uh, you know, that are, that are untrue. Mm-hmm. Um, if, I've, if, I've, if I let myself feel, no, God is a God of love. No, God doesn't want to punish me every time I make a mistake. God knows that God's laws sort out all of that. God, God just feels compassion for me when I make a mistake. Mm. Like God's merciful. So when I am repentant, mercy comes from God. Right? These are all principles I need to start to understand. And this is why I constructed the, what is called the Lord's Prayer, but it's been vastly modified in the Bible. Mm-hmm. But the real Lord's Prayer, I constructed it in such a way to actually expose in the individual their false concepts of themselves and God. Mm -hmm. And so what you're describing here is the beginning of faith, or this is what faith is initially. It's Initially, it's it's just a a logical intellectual concept. A logical intellectual concept, and I also heard you mention uh, we're opening our heart based on that concept. We're deciding to take the risk Risk. of our heart based on logic. Yes. based on the fact that we have a logical intellectual concept of God which is different to our own emotional concept of God mm-hmm. and also different to our own emotional concept of our current human parents. So, so what we're doing is we're saying, right, I realise inside of me I do believe all these bad things about God, right? I believe that God's going to, you know, that God's, I'm angry with God and I'm upset about this and I'm upset about all these different things and, and I need to understand that this is in my soul. I do need to. And I need to allow the expression of these particular things that are in my soul, if they're ever going to be released, I need to have the humility to release them. However, I need to also hold on, at least initially intellectually, to the concept that God is different to the person I feel God to be. Mm. And, I, and I feel God is wrathful, and sometimes I even, might even want God to be wrathful. You know, there's a lot of people on the planet who want God mm-hmm. to be wrathful. They want God to come and punish everybody else other than them, right? So they want God to be wrathful. Mm. And, and I'm going to have to, at some point, give up that concept if I really want to continue receiving divine love from God. To receive divine love from God, I have to have a belief that is at least in harmony with the love being received. And if my belief is that God's not a God of love, then I can't have a longing for God's love. Mm. If my belief is that God's going to be punishing to me, then I can't receive divine love under those circumstances because it's... It, because my concept that I'm holding on to with my will is in direct disharmony with the love itself from mm. entering me. So, One of the things on that point that I had written down here was that faith is believing a right viewpoint of God. Exactly. It's, it's having a belief or exercising our desire even to believe the truth, the truth about, about God, God, which is good things about God, actually. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. We must exercise our, our intellect at least to see the logic and to see the truth that God exists in the manner that we are not accustomed to, but in a new manner. A different, uh, God is different to the person we believe God to be. Mm-hmm. We need to understand that. Mm. And, and if we don't ever understand it and we're not even willing to intellectually see the difference, then we're never going to open our heart to the difference. So, so to give an example... We get a lot of Orthodox Christians emailing us, condemning me and condemning all of the teachings that I'm, that I'm teaching and stating to me categorically over and over again that, that God is a God of wrath, he's going to punish the wicked and he's going to punish me. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, of course, I don't believe that because I have a relationship with God and I know God's never going to punish me for my actions taken that are, that are in harmony with love. Mm-hmm. So God can't, is, is never going to punish me for that. And God's not going to punish me for, mis- for mistakes I make unless the mistakes are out of harmony with love. Then, then the laws of God correct me. Mm-hmm. And I don't even see that as a punishment. I just see it as correction, where God's correcting me from my mistakes. Uh, I don't see that, that God's being punishing God under those circumstances. I see that God's just providing me correction here, providing me correction there. And if I'm willing to accept the correction, then... I'll have a completely different experience with God. So, so, but they're telling me that God's going to punish me and destroy me and I've got to repent and if I don't repent, 
and then they tell me all the beliefs I should accept about God, which are all about God being a God of wrath. In fact, the whole idea that God's going to destroy me for making a mistake is all about a God of wrath. Mm -hmm. Now, this is why they can't receive love, because they have a false belief about God in that moment. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, they're not acting in harmony with love, because if they acted in harmony with love, they wouldn't act in harmony with this false belief. They'd realise the truth. Hang on a sec. What I'm telling Jesus is that he's going to be destroyed. <laughs> now, of course, they don't believe I'm Jesus. They believe I'm Alan John Miller and a usurper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they, they're telling Alan John Miller that he's going to be destroyed for being loving and telling truth and preaching concepts of love. In fact, one Christian this week told me that every single time I talk about love, it's pointless because I'm not Jesus and I claim that I am. And because I'm claiming that I am, all of the other works that I do are pointless. And that's what he told me. And I'm going, yeah, you don't understand God at all. Because everything is about love for God. Mm -hmm. My desire to share about love is about love. My motivations are loving. So you don't know, I'm not afraid of God under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. Why would I ever be afraid of God? If God's a God of love and all God does is ever correct me, all I do is wait for correction. And this is not the correction that I need to take because... He's telling me that God's not a God of love. Mm. He's telling me God's somebody else, somebody else that I know God doesn't, isn't. Mm -hmm. Now, while that man who did that accepts God as being a wrathful God and accepts that God's going to destroy the wicked at some point in the future, which is not true and it's never going to be true, that man prevents himself from receiving more love. Mm. He, his belief is out of harmony with the person who's giving the love. And as, a, as such, the love can't flow. So he needs to have some faith. He needs to give up his beliefs in the Bible being God's word on this matter. And he needs to accept that, no, God's not a God of wrath. God's not a God who's going to just punish us for every mistake that we make. Mm -hmm. God is not vindictive. God's not going to torment me in hell. Mm -hmm. God's not going to place me in hell so that Satan can torment me either, by the way. right? God is a God of love. And if I go to God with that underlying feeling in my soul, now I've got the ability to receive some of that love. And this is where we must have faith that God is different to the person that we've been taught God is. Mm. And if, if we take an example, say, from Joanne Bloggs, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you've given an example there of where someone believes in a very angry, punishing God, mm -hmm. and that's, prevent that's actually not basing their faith in anything truthful. Exactly. A lot of other people might feel um, that God is... A, feel, say that they believe, no, God is loving. They God say is, God's loving, and they say they believe God's loving. Yeah, yeah, but they feel they themselves are not good enough yet. They're to, not lovable. They're not lovable. Yeah. Now, uh, what I find interesting about that belief, which is I'm um, bringing this example because... I, something you've felt I, yourself. Something that I've felt myself. Yeah. Um, is that we're, we're basing our faith on the fact that we believe God is loving. It's just oh, I'm the problem. Which actually turns into a reflection onto God, doesn't it? Totally. It's saying that God only loves perfect people or worthy people. Exactly. Or, and, or people that don't make mistakes. So it turns into a faith that is based on untruth about God. Well, it's an untruth about love too. Yeah. That yeah. love can't be given to anybody who's not perfect. Mm. It, that's the belief really, that you've yeah. got to try to be perfect and then you'll get love. And I, and and I, I can understand why people have that because that's the beliefs they have with their daddies and mummies, right? That was, the, that was the condition under which they received love when they were growing up. But that's not the, not the condition under which we receive love from God. Mm. And it's actually, so then it actually prevents us acting in faith, asking for love, because we're actually trying to make ourselves perfect before we ask for the love. If, yes, if I have a belief in my heart that I have to be perfect before God will love me, then I'm not going to desire God's love when I'm not perfect. That's the sad thing about it. Yeah. 
But it's when we're not perfect that we need more of God's love. <laughs> and where we end up in this self-reliant thing we talked about earlier, yeah. where we're trying to fix ourselves before we even ask, even act in faith. And remember, we've said right at the beginning of this conversation that fixing ourselves is a long, drawn-out, natural love process. Mm. And allowing God's love to transform our soul is a short thing that deals with the causes. Yeah. So while I'm exercising my will by saying, well, no, I've got to be perfect and not make mistakes before God's going to love me, I am actually on the natural love path. Even though I might believe in all of the concepts of divine truth, mm -hmm. I might believe it, that God is love, and I might believe that because God's love, all of these different things are true, and all those kind of beliefs that are basically just intellectual at this point in my head, they're not in my heart, because I haven't received a line of love to know them in my heart. And, and because of all of that, I'm just still on the natural love path. Mm. I'm still engaging this process where I believe I have to rely on myself to get into a condition before God's going to love me. No. If you truly understood God's love, you'd understand that God already loves you right now, no matter how dark and evil and whatever it is else that you've done in your life and no matter how bad everyone else thinks you are, God loves you. And God's waiting to give you this love but is reliant on your just opening your soul to receive it. And while you hold on to this concept that you're not good enough, you can't receive it mm -hmm. because that's not God's concept of you. Mm -hmm. God's con to, to receive to my love, I have to be in harmony with the truth of God's concept of me. Of me. So, do I, but, and you just, that last even intellectually. statement you said, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> exactly. Because I've heard that statement initially and mm -hmm. I've thought, Okay, I have to get into harmony with how God feels about me. Emotionally, I have to do that before I'll receive the love. But that's skipping over faith, isn't it? It is skipping over faith. But also it is true that you will have to release some emotions in order to have a sincere desire to, to ask for love when you feel bad about yourself. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion to a person who feels bad about themselves is feel bad about yourself. Have a good cry about how bad you are. <laughs> but understand with your mind at least that God will still give you love even though you're bad yeah. if you ask for it. And I suppose my experience is that if I act in faith and ask for the love, then all of the feelings that I have that I don't deserve it or that I'm not worth it or I'm not perfect that enough yet to up. receive it, they actually come up more profoundly and mm. intensely than if I just try to feel it on my own and yep. get up the courage to act in faith and ask God for love. Yes. So... Yep. Um, it seems like using our will to, to in faith, yep. it seems to... Even what you said, like get up the courage to ask for God's love. Yeah, that's that how That is I a blasphemy to... towards God in, yeah. a, in a way <laughs> it's because a, it's a belief about God that say, says that we need to be afraid of God somehow. <laughs> like, so it, it itself is a statement of an error that exists in the soul yeah. and that needs to be released. Now, when you receive some of the love from God, you'll realise there was no risk <laughs> there was no risk That's there. right. For me, the yeah. most scary thing would be to ask for love and not receive it uh, because I would view that as something about myself. But that's actually skipping over the, the truth that God always is going to love me if I ask for it sincerely, isn't it? Yeah, but if you think you're asking for it and you don't receive it, right? Yeah. Which is a possibility. Sure. A lot of people do that. Right. They think okay. and they don't receive it. And then the emotion comes up, I'm not worthy to receive it. Understand that while that's an emotion you need to feel, that it's not the truth from God's perspective. Mm. God, God feels that all I, God, the way God feels is if you ask me for love, I'm going to give you some. <laughs> that's how God feels. <laughs> right. I, I have to wait till you ask because you have to exercise your will. Right. And I can't give it to you when you haven't exercised your will because that would be forcing you, and I don't want to force you. My love will never force you. But if you ask, I will always give it. Mm. That's the underlying belief, right? So you're really saying there's two categories of people, people who think they're asking and not receiving, mm -hmm. and then there's people where, you know, I don't even ask. They're not even asking. Because I, I just feel like I'm not going to get it. Exactly. Because I'm already judging myself so much. And, you, and, and you, of course you can't get it under those circumstances because you're not asking. Exactly. <laughs> That's the and only reason why. It's not because you're bad. <laughs> so because you're not asking. It's a sort of like two camps who don't receive God's love is the ones who never actually uh, ask. Ask. And the ones who 
tell themselves they're asking, but they're... But they're arrogant and proud and they've got a heap of blockages which are out of harmony with love that cause them to not receive. Yeah. So, so there are... And if we analyse why people don't receive divine love, both of those are the reasons. There are only two reasons, in fact, why we don't receive divine love. One is because we have a feeling inside of us that we, we won't ask. That's one reason why. And the other reason why is because we think we're asking and we're just being arrogant and we've, we've got heaps of blocks that we're not being open to. That's the only other reason why we would not receive divine love when we ask. So, so which one is it? <laughs> That's the question we need to ask. When, ask ourselves when we ask for divine love or we think we're asking for divine love and not receiving it. Stop for a second again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I just, yeah, I just feel that there's still quite a lot of misunderstanding about how the love transforms the soul, right? And you know, that's what what we why we brought up this message today. You know because we want to get across the concept that the importance of developing faith in God, that God's nature is good, that God doesn't, you know, that at least even here I have the concept, God's nature is good, God's nature is good, God's nature is good, you know. And then if I have an emotion which says, I hate you, God, didn't feel that, go and feel that. I hate you, God, ah, bash, 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 bang, bang, you know, let it go. So that after that you can have a sincere longing for the love to enter you because you are here to understand God's nature is good, mm -hmm. uh, you know, at least. But, but a lot of people are telling themselves, like, they, they believe here God's nature is good. Here they feel anger or hatred towards God. They don't release the emotion because they feel it's a negative emotion and it's bad and they'll get punished for it and it's wrong. And God already knows. God already knows, yeah. 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 So th the reality is that we have this concept of God that is flawed so much. It's really deeply flawed. And as a result of the deep, and we can include this, as a result of the deep flaws that we have in our concept of God, which is about faith, a lack of faith in God, we have these deep flaws. So because we lack faith, we do not engage prayer. Mm. And, and prayer is the thing that opens our soul to the reception of love. Prayer is the longing towards God, the desire for God's love to enter my soul. When I lack faith in God, I don't have a longing for God. I don't, so I don't pray. I won't pray. I'll refuse to pray. Mm. And, and that's the problem is that we re, most of us are refusing to pray and then we're going, I'm on the divine love path. How can you be on the divine love path when you're refusing to pray and you're not receiving divine love? You're on the natural love path. <laughs> you're not on the divine love path. When you're on the divine love path, you want this relationship with God as your number one priority. That's why I said in the first century, very first commandment, uh, you know, when I was asked what, what are the two, what, what, what are the things that you would say to us as the most important things for our life? Love God with your whole heart, your whole soul, your whole mind, your whole strength. Have a concept of God that God, as to why you would love God as well. Like, don't, don't believe that God is wrath. Don't believe that God is punishing. Don't believe any of these things. They're all false. And every time you hold on to the belief of these things, you are not going to pray. You are not going to have a longing for God. You are better off if you feel angry with God, go out and have a bash and yell and scream and swear at God. Get it out of your system. <laughs> Get it out of your feelings, you know, so that you can go to God with a sincere feeling, I do want to receive love from you because I know that you're not the God that I imagined you to be. Yeah. Do you say 